Let's conger on. Well, this week it's happy hour all the way as we have a shot at finding two homes for two very different families. Two queens and an old lady together. <laughs> Fabulous. It's an ensuite. Yes! <laughs> a good cocktail needs the right mix. You're the man in the relationship. Did you hear that? Kathy can't walk through a flat with two boys in with no clothes on. She doesn't care. <laughs> she does it all the time. Make sure you get what you order. Do a tiny little bit of wall knocking, Dan. That is like a big, big no. And no matter how much you take on board, never lose sight of reality. You're so brilliant, Paul, and you're such an amazing house hunter. I have never i never heard anything so outrageous in my life. With a big tool belt. <laughs> <laughs> Who does it with this week we're taking on the capital with two sets of house hunters. Both moving on, but in very different ways. So this is North London, where you're fast or you're last. So we better get going. While some areas of the UK have seen house prices drop, the London market has proven resilient to the downturn, with property prices showing a 2.7% rise in the last 12 months. Home to nearly 8 million residents, it remains one of the most expensive and competitive cities in the world to buy a property, with an average house costing 15 times an average salary here. As a result, more and more people are buying with their friends, and that's just what Ian Rickson Kathy Taylor and Richard Roberts plan to do. This purely platonic threesome plan to pull resources to give them £470,000 worth of bargaining power. They're on the hunt for a smart three-bedroom North London flat where they can set up home together and live happily ever after. Obviously, we're not the 2.4 kids' family. But, you know, we still want it to be a family home, you know, yeah, our own so. homemade family. Great minds think alike, and in this case, that even extends to employment, with all three of them working crazy hours as managers of busy London bars. Friends Ian and Richard share a nice rented flat in Upmarket Clerkenwell, and Cathy currently lives in Holloway. Her grown-up son has just left home, and she's looking to step up the social side of her life. All three consider their plan will get them a better property for less money. I think Kathy's more in charge than Richard and I. She's the mother figure. Yeah. She's the motherly one. She's very, oh, very stubborn. Oh. <laughs> there you are. Whereas I think Ian's the diva. <laughs> <laughs> Proper Celine Dion, mate. <laughs> <laughs> and Richard's a bit of a pushover, uh, I think. No. areas to live are Islington, Holloway, Finsbury Park and Highgate, all premium locations with price tags to match. They're putting £158,000 per person into the pot and the big challenge to find one property that all three people agree is good enough to part with their money. Rather you than me, Phil. How are you going to decide who gets what? Uh, my most important thing is the location. Richard, how about you? You have a good living space, because if there's going to be three adults living together, yeah. we need our own space as well. Yeah. Ian? I kind of think that should get the largest bedroom, and if it's en suite, that would be absolutely magnificent. He needs it. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, He's we'll all be waiting, waiting for, like, for hours. hours and hours. <laughs> OK. <Yeah. laughs> Let, him have Let him have his own bathroom. <laughs> that is true, to be fair. It is. Um, I think the toughest thing that we'll come across is the... Is the quality of the bedrooms. I did say I would have the smallest bedroom if uh, the property is in a location that I prefer. <laughs> it, it's just that so you might regret that. <laughs> <laughs> there is going to be a fight, you know that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to throw Great. the first punch. <laughs> For their 470,000, Cathy, Ian and Richard want their flat to be in a smart area of North London, close to a tube station, have three equal-sized bedrooms, a large sitting room, two bathrooms and some outside space. But Cathy, Richard and Ian aren't the only ones looking for a fresh start and a new place to call home. Newlyweds Daniel and Jenny Bernreuter both have high-end jobs buying and selling posh drinks and have been living for two years in their rented flat in Notting Hill. We're kind of at the point in our life that we are looking to have our, our own place with our own style and a real home. 
Despite their hectic work lives, spending quality time together is important, something they're struggling with in their current flat. It's definitely got to the point now where the, the space isn't long-term right for us. They have their hearts set on North London, an area that holds fond memories for Jenny. My nana has lived in the same house for 35 years and this is really the, the place that I've been visiting that's never changed throughout my life. That's you, darling, when you are a little tiny girl. And German-born beverage manager Daniel is also thinking that North London would be a safe and easy commute from work. Sometimes I work long hours into the night, so therefore the journey time needs to be all right, uh, considering that uh, once I've done my, my, my 12, 14 hours, I don't want to spend another hour trying to get home. Daniel and Jenny want to centre their search in Highgate, but will also look as far north as Muswell Hill and south as Kentish Town. Buying this property is an important first step for them, so I'm keen to get all our ducks in a row before we start. Is there any possibility that you've over-romanticised this thing because it's your first marital home? I think the thing we're most excited about is putting our own kind of personal touch on the place mm -hmm. and really, you know, making somewhere that stylistically and feeling is, is our own. The problem about that is it seems to me that if your life is so busy that you can't find a flat in the first place, how much more difficult would it be to have major works done on something? Cosmetic work, you know, new kitchen, new bathroom, that's all good, but knocking down walls and... That Building kind of walls. Yeah. I don't think your search is difficult, but I think it's difficult for you. Um, we should be able to crack it. <laughs> Don't want to sand to head. Hate sanding overconfident. But you do it so well, Kirsty. With a healthy budget of £360,000, Daniel and Jenny are looking for a period property with two bedrooms, an absolute must. They're also looking for a decent sized kitchen and some outdoor space. I'm liking your confidence, Kirsty, but from where I'm sitting, it doesn't quite add up. Do you want to swap? No. <laughs> I don't know why I put my hand up for this. This search, Phil, is not a search of two halves. It's a search of five people. That's not five, that's seven. Five people <laughs> with the same problem, OK? Five people with the same problem. Mm. Their jobs do not enable them to find flats. That's where we come okay. in. I just wish I only had two of them. OK, so it is more difficult for you because I've got a couple who are more unified and you've got three yeah. individuals. No, not that they're not unified. They do describe themselves as a modern family. But they've never lived together and there's going to be complications. I just sense trouble. With eight out of ten of the most expensive boroughs north of the river, both sets of house hunters have picked a pricey but nonetheless popular patch to look for a home. We've got absolutely fabulous shops, restaurants and cafes. So it's good for old and young. The North London's OK. I grew up in North London. It's quite funky. There's a lot of um, kind of young working couples. In Highgate, one of their top areas, the average house price is £764,000. That's over three times the national average. And even at these prices, competition is stiff. Agents are telling us that there just aren't enough properties coming onto the market. I'm very aware that location is important to Cathy, so I'm feeling pretty confident about our first property. It's a three-bed ground floor conversion in Holloway, close to the tube and easy for all of them to get to work. But before we get inside, there's something of an overarching issue to discuss. That is the main line eastward. It's the east coastline out of King's Cross. I've lived next to a railway line before, and you don't notice it. I'm hoping we're in Cathy's comfort zone in Holloway, yes, yeah. close to your son. Yep. Location's um, excellent. This is a great flat, if a tad on the small side for three people. Everything is nicely decorated and there are two bathrooms, so as agreed, Ian would get one to himself. There's three compact bedrooms, but the layout is such that they all open up onto the garden. At £465,000, it sits just under their £470,000 budget. And with this viewing, there's a heightened sense of urgency. Now, I wanted to show you this one first, simply because they had an asking price offer on it yesterday. This is the last viewing. No one else is going to see it after you guys. OK. okay. So... It's a little bit small. Yeah, it's smaller than what we're used to, but it's very light in here. Yeah. Yeah. 
But there's not room for three sofas. No. no. But you want a sofa each. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Maybe a tad unrealistic with the sofas? The truth is, if you want to live in an upmarket area with this amount of money, everything will be a bit smaller. Still, there's one room guaranteed to get Ian going. Now, this is the main bedroom. OK. We've got three bedrooms and... It's an ensuite. It's an ensuite. <gasps> yes! <laughs> uh... Fabulous. It's going better than I expected. The bedrooms would be the telling matter, because Richard and Ian live in quite a generous rental place. So, I don't know. Oh, right. Ooh, this okay. is nice. Very nice. I love that. <laughs> yeah. I, th <laughs> I think I might have to swap. <laughs> no, this is mine. Is it going to get the sun? I don't know, but there's no storage in here. Good Lord. Kathy, this must be your room. <laughs> <I know. laughs> uh, that is small. Can you fit a double bed? Mm, no. Oh, you'll have to have a bunk bed. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not like you're going to share it with <laughs> <gasps> How rude. <laughs> Difficult one to call this. Kathy agreed to have the small room, but I'm sure she wasn't thinking this small. They've never all lived together before, and something like this could end in resentment. That said, what's the verdict? Very nice. Good. Very good feeling. We really like it mm -hmm. a lot. <laughs> but no the storage. practicalities of it, could we actually fit everything in there? Mm. So that's the only negative about it. Yeah, because we like yeah. it so much, we want to yeah, make, we want it, to make it, it work. That's positive. I, I'm relieved. I, I thought you were going to be concerned about the bedrooms. They're a little bit small for our liking, but they're workable. Fine. Yeah. Well, we've got more to see. OK. So we'll carry on. Yeah. Good. Good. I suspect they're getting a little bit carried away there. <laughs> it was their first view and they're kind of eager and egging each other on. It's my job to keep the feet on the ground, make sure they buy the right one, not just the first one. This week we're in London with two sets of house hunters, all experts in mixing it up. But high expectations, tight budgets and a fast-moving market make for a dangerous cocktail. Bar managers and best friends Ian, Richard and Cathy are joining forces to buy a three-bed flat in North London. The first place I showed them went down well, but I'm determined to crank up the quality. Newlyweds Jenny and Daniel have a budget of £360,000 and are searching in North London for their first marital home. But in a market as fierce as this, we've got our work cut out. Lack of property stock's a big problem, with some agents reporting as many as 20 potential buyers ready to view properties before the details even make it online. Despite this, we've managed to find a property in Jenny and Daniel's top area of Highgate. With Hampstead Heath on their doorstep and Jenny's grandmother just a 15-minute walk away, it's their dream location. And this is their dream flat. No, not that one. This one. Don't be fooled by its unassuming exterior. Jenny and Daniel fell in love with it online, and with two bedrooms, a huge entertaining space, as well as a fantastic private garden, you can see why. The flat's just been reduced by 25 grand to 360,000 pounds and could now be within Daniel and Jenny's reach. But, as ever, there's a catch. So I'm tagging along to offer a helping hand. Little birdie told us you knew something about this flat. <laughs> this one here. Yeah. We, um, we looked at this flat when it was way over budget and we decided to be sensible and not to view it. It is now on the market at considerably less. Do you know why it's been reduced so significantly? There is a damp problem. Okay. And damp is one of those things that scares the bejesus out of people. <laughs> and it's yeah. close to your granny? It is indeed. Although she'd rather be called Nana. Nana. Right. Sorry. Thank you, Doug. <laughs> right, My card is marked, we better go in, haven't we? But damp is no laughing matter. It's officially bad for your health, particularly with things like allergies and asthma. Although the vendor has had a quote of £11,000 to fix the damp issue, we think that proper maintenance and better ventilation will go a long way to solving many of the problems. What I definitely like is the, the slightly quirky layout and, you know, first thing I, I see when I walk in is this beautiful fireplace here yeah. and, and the, the window arrangement. Um, it's just lovely. 
Daniel's making all the right noises, but this flat is right at the top of their budget and it needs work doing immediately. This flat is about courage. Is Daniel a naturally risk-averse person or is he more gung-ho? He knows that we may have to take risks if it is going to be that place that could really be, you know, our dream home. This is the room that's yeah. suffering the damp problem. I will, I will try to keep an open mind, but this is definitely something I'm slightly turned off by. Better see what the other half thinks. <laughs> They're nice. They're so sweet. Yeah. And they're, they're really, really up nice. for it. They're really up yeah. for it. I don't think they'll buy it. It's the first okay. flat we've shown them. It's the first flat they'll buy together. They, they don't, don't want to get anything wrong. It's your fault. You're the one with the expertise. Can I write that down? This be nice to fill week. <laughs> <laughs> it's always one a year. It's my birthday. <laughs> <laughs> Just so horribly presented. I have problems looking past all the rubbish. Yeah. But hopefully, if we can look past, then we can beat those people that can't look past and have ourselves a beautiful home. Yep. Come on, Daniel, listen to the wife. Courage wins out in the end. The one thing for me is the damn problem kind of, um, you know, not 100% sold on the, on the, how, the ease of getting rid of it. But, um... Could I find someone else who could persuade you? Maybe someone, someone with a big qualified with, than you. with a big uh, uh, tool belt yeah. who says, <laughs> "Yes, Daniel, that is no problem." <laughs> but, but, but you know, I, you know. I have never ever heard anything so outrageous in my life. But I totally understand. I shall go and find a man who can. <laughs> I should have brought my tool belt. I dread to think what you keep in yours, Phil. Back with friends Richard, Cathy and Ian, we're feeling buoyed up after a good first viewing in Holloway. Their only complaint was size. So we've moved three miles east to Haggerston on a quest for square footage. I'm aware it's not in Cathy's comfort zone and it's been a bit neglected, but there's a lot of investment going on here and I think if they're patient, it could work well for them. Up and down the street, you can see all of these old council-owned houses coming down, yeah. all being replaced with new builds. What's it like late at night, though, around here? Doesn't it feel very bit... safe. Yeah. Mm. It's, it's a slightly difficult one because that street will look so different in 12 months' time. Yeah. Um, I know what you mean. But we've it? still got to live here in those yeah. 12 months. Yeah. yeah. Not the reaction I'd hoped for, but I'm sure the inside will sway them as this purpose-built duplex has enough room for those three sofas they want to ship in. This time there's also a big kitchen, three bedrooms, one with Ian's ensuite and a decent bit of outside space overlooking the canal. It was built 15 years ago, so could do with some updating, but it is 20,000 under budget, so there's a bit left in the pot to tart it up. OK, yeah, it's, it's Big. a lot bigger than I thought it was going to be from yeah. the outside. I think great joy of this place is that it's split level. So it kind of has the feeling of a house. It has certainly a lot of greater options for three adults to have separate space. Yeah. Um, and it's got I nice think got the outside as well. It has got an outside area. With the canal. Now, this is actually a communal garden. As you can see, the lady who owns it's planted these trees and, and nobody ever bothers her up this end. I don't think there's much sun. It's north really? facing. It's north facing, OK. Yeah. It's an outside area, which is kind of quite rare in central London. It's better than not having an outside area, but... You just want it to be in the sun. You know. You can have some good well, parties, haven't you? Well, yeah. If you swim over the canal and sit on that bank, <laughs> you'll you get are, the sun. You are awkward. <laughs> In the current climate, buying property with friends makes a lot of sense, but only if the deal is thoroughly thought through and everyone prepares a good exit strategy. It may be a home, but it's also a business transaction, so in addition to the normal legal paperwork, make sure your solicitor prepares what's called a deed of trust. It's like a property prenup that covers anything from paying bills to falling out and protects everyone's interests. And top of our list for potential disputes, size of bedrooms. It's a bit small, isn't it? We couldn't get a king size in here, could you? No. It does feel very boxy, doesn't it? I wouldn't really fancy this one. No. 
I'm sure you, you'll have your eye on this for a minute because it's got the ensuite shower. It's a lovely size room, it's yeah. a good size room, overlooks the canal. Yeah. yeah. Um, really nice. I think I would have to make the compromise here for Cathy. Um, she doesn't like the location particularly. So I think to sweeten her, it might have to be a bathroom in it. <laughs> okay, so she's, you think she sure. offer this room? Yeah. It's a nice gesture, but I'm not convinced it's going to be enough to persuade Cathy to buy into this place. I just looked out the window and I was thinking, if I actually lived here on my own and I looked out of that window, I would be very depressed. OK. And the heating is a big, big issue for me. It's, it's got these storage heaters. There's no gas in them. So you couldn't even put in central heating? I would doubt it. OK. That is like a big, big no. Well, it was always a bit of a gamble to try and get them the space they need, but I don't think it's paid off. So, are we scoring points or not? Mm, half, half. The jury's still out for okay. me. I can see the potential in the property, but I know these two don't like it, so... So we've got a, yeah, a no, know. a 50-50 and an in. Uh, yeah, I like, I like the size of the property. But unless they're all in, they're all out. The joys of working with three friends. Jenny and Daniel were a bit put off by my first property, so I want to show them somewhere tidier and drier. It's in the more suburban Alexandra Palace, three miles away from Jenny's grandmother in Highgate. It's a new area for them, but with fast trains into town, they could be in central London in less than half an hour. You have reservations about the area. Not Just sure we don't about the know the links. area so well. Come and have a look and see what you think. It may be further from Highgate, but you definitely get more for your money. Currently, there's a massive sitting room at the front of the flat. There's two bedrooms, one of which is quite small, and a decent kitchen, plus the outside space they were looking for. It's on the market for just short of £330,000. That's 30 grand below their budget. I have a plan for this house, which is basically to have the f two bedrooms at the front and then do a tiny little bit of wall knocking down. Not anything <laughs> scary or major, I promise you. Could you sleep at the front? I think so. Yeah. They don't sound particularly enthusiastic, but I'll press on. Basically, this room becomes the bedroom, this one stays as is, and the kitchen and this smaller bedroom get knocked together to give them one massive cooking, eating, sitting room. Genius, perhaps. I absolutely am convinced that although you're being very nice and polite and positive, there is no element of this flat which is lifting your heart. Mm, uh, no. I think I'm, I'm not, I'm not you're loving not it. You're not seeing it. No, no that's no. fine, that's fine. That's not what you're... You can't love every flat. You're only looking for one flat. Mm. Daniel and Jenny are quite groovy. A bit cooler than me, actually. So I can see that this probably doesn't come the mustard. I might have to up my cool quota. A struggle at the best of times and not something I can rely on Phil for either. What I do know after seeing this flat and in this area it is that I don't want it. So, there we go. I don't want it either then. Good, super. It seems that Ali Pali is just too suburban for our fashionable first time buyers. It's not what you're looking for at this moment in your life. No, we're looking for something with a bit more pizzazz. Yeah. I think I'm getting the message, and clearly what I need to find is a sexier cocktail. This week we're on a mixing up mission with a cocktail of house hunters. But they're going to need a dash of compromise and a double order of courage if they're going to win through. High-end drinks managers Daniel and Jenny were in good spirits after the property in Highgate, but Alexandra Palace just wasn't appealing to their palate. Back with our three friends, Kathy, Richard and Ian, and we're still trying to crack that whole size location chestnut. But I think we stand a good chance with this, our third property. The flat's the biggest we've seen, and it's in upmarket Highgate, 
one of their favorite locations close to the tube and to all the swanky bars and restaurants. I don't want to jinx it, but I have to say, I've got a good feeling about this one. We are on the second floor up there. Okay. okay. And with any luck, Kirsty, you'll meet us in there. First thoughts of being here? Very good. Very nice. Like like Absolutely fabulous area. Lovely. Yeah. Fantastic. Lovely. Yeah, really good. And good. good transport links for all of us. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Very got the location. Let's see if we've got the space. Yeah. Oh, you're such a tease, Phil. This flat is huge. They could fit their three sofas and some. There are three proper double bedrooms, one with an ensuite and a separate family bathroom. It's a bit tired at the moment, but with some cosmetic updating, it could be amazing. It's being marketed at just under 500 grand. 30,000 over budget, but we have it on good authority that a deal can be done within their price range. Look, we're going to stay to let us in. Hello. Hello, nice to see you. Good afternoon, yeah. ladies. Come on gents. in, everybody. Uh, we've got a lot of space up here on the second floor. I like. I like. We reckon it probably needs a bit of money spending on it, but it's got very strong features. But it's something we can do over time to yes. make it our yeah. home. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. the best yeah. space we've seen, definitely. Yeah, yeah. no, absolutely. Well, so. we've only got the first room. Let's, well, yeah. let's yeah. split yeah. up and, um, and explore. Yeah. It's great they're so excited, but there are three people in this relationship, and I want to make sure that Richard is comfortable with the level of work this place requires. As you can see, it's, it's just it's a bit tired, it's a bit dated, but it's not complicated to... Yeah, work can be done. No. We'd obviously have to save up for a while, as this is the top of our budget. Yeah. You don't have to do it all at once. No. Ian is very vocal. He is indeed. Yeah. <laughs> um, Always. Um, uh, and I'm aware you're more laid back and he is more vocal, but yeah. I just want to be sure that you know you, you get your aura in as well. No, 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 I like the place. It's good. Good. So this is Cathy's room. Uh, no. <laughs> I think it's my room, it's got an en suite. It's the one with the en suite. Cathy can't walk through your flat with two boys in with no clothes on. She doesn't care. <laughs> she does it all the time. She's not shy. Nah, this is clearly the girls' room. It's got the balcony for drawing your knickers on. Um, can you see any downsides to this flat? I haven't done that. I haven't done that. No. I just come in, I rescue <laughs> Phil's <laughs> ass. And then I <laughs> go away again. <laughs> sort of property superwoman. You are. They're certainly feeling the love with this place and it appears to be catching. So, you're so brilliant, Phil, and you're such an amazing house hunter. And really, really clever at everything you do. This is a cracking flat, isn't it? It's cracking flat. It's a good flat. find. It's a good find. It's a good find. I thought I was in trouble. No, 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 no. Your property if, house hunting fairy came along. If only and I'd asked you before. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. Right, so this is the third room, but they're all yeah, decent sizes. They're all good sizes. Yeah, they are. There's a few Fantastic. cracks around. Yeah. I, yeah. Do they just need filling, is it as simple as that, or is there anything, is, you know, is the building? We need to get that checked out. Yeah. Because when the buses go past on the front, the, the whole room shakes. Is that going to be a problem for, for us, though? Do you think it's too noisy? No. I'm glad their sensible side is kicking in. If only I could say the same for my property wife. We were just celebrating. Just let them speak. <laughs> just because we think it's a nice flat. Yeah. Go on. It is. I agree with you. <laughs> so, that's one. Cathy? Perfect. Ian? I love it. Needs updating. Needs new kitchen, new bathrooms. Yeah. For me, I think it comes down to price. We have to get this at a price that allows you to do the work that you want to do. Sure. Yeah. Right, okie doke, let's conger on. <laughs> <laughs> Always nice to see Phil dancing. He loves it, really. Back with Jenny and Daniel. And if the suburbia of Alexandra Palace scared them, then I'll have no such problems with my final flat. It's in the fashionable area of Muswell Hill, just 15 minutes to Jenny's nana in Highgate. Do you think you could live on a busy road? We'd prefer not to, but I suppose it depends how noisy it is inside. Busy road aside, this two-bed, first-floor flat could be the sexy property cocktail thereafter. It's immaculately decorated, 
with good-sized rooms, a nice outside terrace and with the potential to extend into the loft. It's virtually future-proof. It's 15 grand over Jenny and Daniel's maximum budget at a whisker under £375,000. But in the three months it's been on the market, there's been no sign of an offer, so I reckon we could conjure up some sort of a deal. This is currently the master bedroom. Quite clearly, it should be the main sitting room. Yeah. Yeah. It is a really good-sized room. It's got secondary double glazing, which is not the prettiest thing in the world, but really works. The noise is, is, is not as bad as I thought it would be. It's actually quite well contained. With the noise issue silenced, I'm hopeful that Jenny and Daniel will be able to see the benefits of such a practical property. Do you think that a flat like this, which for the time being requires no work, yeah. just allows you to get on with living your life? I can see the, the terrace and this area here being used to, to entertain and it's nice. I'm, 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 I'm liking it. It's not Highgate, but it does seem like they're thinking this place could be worth the compromise. The idea of being so stretched versus living yeah. straight away as we want to, I think Potentially, that's, that's better than this romantic dream of living in Highgate in a slightly damp underground flat. <laughs> the fact that this uh, flat is dry is, yeah. is really appealing, <laughs> isn't it? I think that the safety factor of this flat and its potential is going to win them over. And I don't blame them. But part of them still wants to be in Highgate, and not just because of Jenny's nana. It's so much more bohemian, that, that other I flat, know, know. and that kind of really appeals. But, but with this, yeah. it makes it very, very tempting. Just down the road with our alternative family, Richard, Cathy and Ian, we're off to see our final property. It's in Finsbury Park, two miles south of Highgate, an area they were keen for us to look in. It's easy for them all to get to work, close to a busy high street, there's good quality housing stock and nice leafy streets, so it should score points with all of them. Finsbury Park, familiar with it? Yes, very yeah. familiar. Very nice. That's nice quiet street. I guess it's fair to say whatever is hidden behind that door is really going to have to deliver to beat where we just come from. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Phrase that. Definitely. Definitely. Um, well, you know, be honest, shoot from the hip when we get in there. Tell me what you think. OK. This time, we're on the ground and lower ground floors. There are three double bedrooms and a family bathroom. The living space is a decent size, as is the kitchen, and there's a south-facing terrace, which should score points with Cathy. Although it's tenanted at the moment, it's more or less in move-in condition. It is five grand over their budget, but with most flats around here selling at 5% below the asking price, I'm certain we can make the numbers work. Here we come. See what you get for your 475 grand in Finsbury Park. Oh, I'm doubting. <laughs> I knew this was going to happen. It's nice. It's Which nice. But, uh, We'd have to choose. <laughs> yeah, we so liked the last property, but it needed a lot of work doing to it. <laughs> Let's have a look around. It's going to be a dilemma. It's going to be a dilemma. It all comes down to the amount of time they want to spend doing up a property. They've got really busy lives and it is possible they might go for this ready-made option. The kitchen kind of follows the same thing. It's freshly done, really quite smart and jazzy in here. It's um, good space. Really it, good. I kind really of like good. the fact that it's split level as well. People can be in different areas, you know, all cramped together. Okay. Kind of thing. And we do have quite a lot of friends around and dinner parties and stuff like that. Yeah. So uh, I think it's a workable space. It's really nice. Okay. So it'll be quite a social house. We've got a party yeah. house. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I can, I can well imagine there'll be a lot of trouble caused. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you mean. Careful, <laughs> Kathy. <laughs> Phil, you shouldn't judge other people by your own low standards. Nice. Oh, not a bad space. Adequate. Yeah, yes. yep. good size. You can get a double bed, a uh, king size bed in it, can't you? Maybe a queen size bed. Space wise, it's fine. Okay, and one bathroom. I mean... <clears throat> but we've got the outside area. <laughs> and we've one got bathroom, the outside area. Whereas yeah. in the last one, we had the two bathrooms, no outside area. Yeah. They're trying to catch us out. They're trying to play with our minds. <laughs> <laughs> 
No, I think for me it is a dilemma. Uh, no, I don't agree it's with not, you. It's not. It is a dilemma. I'm still with Hangate. Well, they're having a good old debate in there. Proper dilemma going on, as predicted. Three people coming together. Everyone's got different opinions. How are they going to work it out? <laughs> But yeah, I'm a bit lamb chop, pork chop about it. <laughs> I don't know. I like a lamb chop and I like a pork chop. <laughs> oh, yeah. What are we going to do? Don't know. <laughs> Let's get drunk. <laughs> Tough decisions for our three friends tonight. If I was a betting man, I'd say Highgate, but it really could go either way. Early morning in our capital city, and friends Ian, Richard and Cathy have had time to decide between the ready-to-move-into flat in Finsbury Park or the doer-upper in Highgate. They've come to a decision, and I think it's a good one. Very exciting morning. They've asked to meet me here in Highgate, which I'm really pleased about because I do think it's the right flat. The question is the price and the level of work. Achieving a three-way agreement is a major milestone, but it's not without some reservations. This place is 30 grand over budget. The kitchen and bathrooms need some attention, it needs decorating, and they were a bit distracted by those cracks in the wall. It's huge! <laughs> Why do we both do that? <laughs> it is. It is big. Yeah. It feels good to be here. Good. They might be happy now, but it could be short-lived. As always, it's a good idea to get professional advice when considering buying a property. That way, you know what you're in for. We consulted a reputable local builder about this flat and the work that needs doing. It adds up to a sizable chunk of money. And to be honest, I'm really concerned that this is going to put them off. OK. Builder looked at the cracks. Very cosmetic. Yeah. No, not a problem at all. Okay. Got him to look at the bathroom, the kitchen, cosmetic, repaint, etc. We're looking at 22,000. OK. Are you still happy? <laughs> it's a bit <laughs> more scary now. But... Yeah, I'm a bit, well, we bit scared. We realised that it was going to take some money, but we're in an absolutely beautiful area of London and I don't think that the opportunity for a property this size is going to come up very often. Ian's right, of course, but I'm sensing the fear with Cathy and Richard. They need to make some important decisions to ensure they don't get out of their debt financially. You know, if you, if you haven't got we it, have you have to scrape and save exactly. to do all the renovations. You know. It all depends on whether Phil can negotiate the price down, really. I'm now on the back foot because having found what I think really is a perfect flat for them, I'm now worried whether they can actually afford to do all the different things that they want to do to it. I hope that's not going to spoil things. I am feeling the pressure. Despite having had their eyes opened by the property in Muswell Hill, Jenny and Daniel have decided to revisit the first flat they fell in love with in Highgate. Second viewings are about leaving your heart at the front door and viewing with your head. And with the damp issue still at the forefront of their minds, we've shipped in the man with the tool belt, builder Nick Marn. He thinks the main problem is a combination of poor ventilation, condensation and damp clothes, and that it's a relatively simple damp-proofing job. So, how bad is it? I don't think it's bad at all. How much would your job cost? Probably around 1800 something like that. OK. So, that's, that's, uh, so why would you think, um, has there been previous quotes of that, you know, ten times that? Because I think they're talking about doing the whole flat, you and don't... I don't think it's necessary. By their very nature, basement flats are often damp. There can be simple ways to help alleviate the problem, like increasing ventilation or using dehumidifiers. If that's unsuccessful, the next course of action would be fitting a full damp-proof course. But as always, the best advice is to get a couple of quotes before reaching a decision. With this flat, it doesn't seem to be a major problem, nor particularly costly to fix. But Jenny and Daniel are beginning to see that their problems don't end with the damp. The boiler is very old. So it basically needs a new boiler yeah. as well? Yeah, I think so. You change the radiator to a smaller double. You take off the uh, wood chip, but they're not original. No. It starts in the hallway. No, no, no. From what you mentioned, there's a lot of little jobs adding up. Yeah. Hmm. 
oh dear. Jenny and Daniel viewed this flat online and thought it was their dream home. But after a second look around, they're beginning to see that the dream could end up costing a small fortune. This is the kind of flat that will never be finished. It will, we will always be working on it. It is a decision between living in Highgate but never having the time to do the things you like to do in Highgate or not living in Highgate but having a relatively maintenance-free home. It's a really tough decision, but I think I know which one they're going to go for, and it's not here. Whereas my trio have now decided they are very much heading for Highgate. Well, hopefully anyway, so long as we can get over the final hurdle, the price. 30 grand more than their budget, but with a tip-off that there's room for manoeuvre, plenty to talk about. Let's just discuss price. Uh, our, our maximum kind of budget is 475,000. Although, Cathy didn't really want to go up to that much, did you? But I could. I like to think I could make a reasonable case without insulting anyone to too great an extent um, for something in the low 440s, maybe even 440. Well, if you don't ask, you don't get. Oliver, how are you doing? Yeah, very good, thank you. We've just been having our council of war. The, the offer is at 442,500. Yeah. Terrific. Good luck. Thanks, Oliver. Cheers. Bye. Well, I kind of got the impression that it's not, he's disappointed. Yeah. But he knows your good buyers and he knows you're the buyers for that flat. Okay. Whether he can put that across to his client or not, let's wait and see. As for Jenny and Daniel, what they've decided they want is the ready to move into flat in Muswell Hill. But at 15 grand over their £360,000 budget, I've also got a bit of a job to secure it for them. I think go in as low as you want to go. I would be. Um tempted to go in with an offer as low as maybe 340 and then see what her reaction is. Good idea. Let's give it a go. Oh, Paul, it's Kirsty. How are you? I have got an offer for you. What could be regarded as a uh, sub-zero offer. OK, you got the thermals on? 340,000. Our super chilled offer is in, but we've been told that the vendor won't be giving an answer today, so Jenny and Daniel have an anxious night ahead. Back with Kathy, Ian and Richard, and after our cheeky low offer, I'm anxious to see if the vendor's taken the bait. Here we go. Hi there. Hi. Hi. Hmm. Yeah, no, I appreciate that. Thanks, Oliver. Cheers. Bye-bye. OK, well, it wasn't a flat no. It is a long way from what he was yeah. hoping for. So what he said is, could he have overnight to think about a figure which he could accept? Um, that sounds quite promising, doesn't it? I can smell a deal. OK. We're just, <laughs> we're just warming up a little bit. He'll have a sleep this night. So will we. <laughs> In fact, we had several sleepless nights. Another buyer came forward, and the vendor asked for best and final sealed bids. When this happens, it's easy to get carried away and offer more than the market value. But even though they love this flat, we kept our cool and put in a final offer of £475,700, their absolute max, but still nearly £25,000 under the asking price. All we could do then was wait. As for Jenny and Daniel, well, we had some good news. After a week of negotiation, we put in our final offer of £355,000, £20,000 under the asking price and five grand under their budget. And this time, the vendor said she would sell. We sort of expected that she was going to refuse the offer. So when Kirsty rang to tell me, um, it was actually quite a big surprise. If all goes well, we should, you know, exchange within the next two weeks or so. Unfortunately, a couple of days after this, Jenny and Daniel's original mortgage offer was reduced and they couldn't continue with the purchase. 
but they're staying positive. The search continues and they hope to be in somewhere soon. But thankfully, things are a whole lot cheerier over in Highgate. Our trio waited five days to hear back that their bid of £475,700 had been accepted. We were really pleased, we were really excited yeah. that we um, had got it at, at, at that price. Yeah, I thought we were going to lose it. Well, it was so really nerve-wracking. We'd have been so mardy if we had no it. We'd have been, yeah. like, literally yeah. livid. <laughs> But with only weeks to go before they get the keys to their first flat together, there's already some friction in the camp. Now me and Richard both want the big bedroom. Yeah. <laughs> Should toss a coin. <laughs> Might have to. Just have a fight. Uh, it's more fun. <laughs> <laughs> no, clearly I'd win. The issue with this place was always the work needed, so it's good they've agreed a plan of action. I'm going to take a couple of weeks off. Um, when we first move in and get some of the decoration done, um, these two have still got to work, but... That's our excuse, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Absolutely. <laughs> oh, no, can't take any holidays. Absolutely not. <laughs> Happy days ahead, I think.